Welcome to In the Kitchen with Diana. Today, we're making whoopie pies. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Gonna taste good, I know. So here's a whoopie pie. It's two delicious dark chocolate cakey cookies with buttercream filling in the si inside. They are delightful. So growing up, we had whoopie pies on special occasions. They are certainly a labor of love. I'm gonna show you how to make them today. Um, later though, when we were growing up, my mom would make them during harvest and they were super special because they're delicious. And if you love chocolate cake and frosting, you will love these cookies. Cookies, cake, it's a whoopie pie. All right, so we're gonna start out with a cup of shortening. Get out those handy dandy Crisco sticks. Butter won't work again on this one. And I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. And then we have two eggs and two egg yolks. So I got two eggs in there. Separate out your egg yolk. I just do this. Some people use their hand. I just scoop it real gentle from one to the next and get the white out. Okay. All right, so we got two eggs plus two egg yolks. Put that in. We're gonna cream these, this mixture together. Make sure you have a big bowl because this makes a lot. It does, doesn't it? All right, so that's mixed together now. We're gonna add some more ingredients. This is a little complicated, but I'm gonna show you, so hopefully you can do it at home too. All right, so some of the magic in this cookie is the cocoa. So I'm gonna get one cup of hot water just out of the tap, so hot that you can't hold your finger in it, that's how hot, and just one cup, so I'll be right back. Okay, now it's getting hot. Okay, so we got one cup of hot water, and we're gonna add one cup of baking cocoa to it. Just want to gently put it in there. We're going to mix this up. So we're adding the hot water to the cocoa to get it mixed up. And um, just because the cocoa is so dry, you want it moister when you add it in. It just works so much better. So you're going to make a cocoa paste out of it. So this takes a, just a little minute. So you kind of have to be patient with it. These are so delicious that my cousin had them at her wedding. My daughter had them at her wedding for part of the dessert. That's how amazing these are. And if we were ever lucky enough as kids at some of our church potlucks, the ladies would bring them and us kids, we were so excited. Okay, so we're gonna pour the cocoa paste in. all out of there. When I met my husband, he had never heard of these before. So it must be definitely a regional thing. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is in the same measuring cup because it's already messy, I'm gonna get a half a cup of milk and I'm gonna add a half a cup of sour cream. all that together. 
guess you could just dump it in. The original, original recipe called for sour milk, much like we did in the zucchini cake. But after, I think my mom figured out that using sour cream and the milk made it a moister, cakier part of the cookie. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. I know it kind of looks like a mess in your bowl, but don't worry. Okay, so let's give this a, a mix real gently. This really is gonna make a mess because it kind of splatters everywhere and it's gonna, you're gonna think that you mix, messed them up, but don't worry. Let's scrape it down a little. Get it off the bottom. Okay. All right, so now let's add some dry ingredients or more dry ingredients. Let's get a, a nice glug of vanilla in. All right, so now we're gonna have two teaspoons of soda. A teaspoon of baking powder. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And last but certainly not least, we got four cups of flour. Just gently pile that in. Okay, just gonna go nice and slow and get it all mixed together. This definitely is more like a cake batter kind of consistency when we're mixing it up. It's definitely not a thick cookie batter that you might be used to. By the time you're done, you, it's a sandwich cookie. So for every two cookies, you get one cookie after we put the filling in here in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna stop and scrape my bowl down again. the bottom make sure I got it all mixed in good this bowl sometimes it likes to hide ingredients on the bottom that looks super great all right so I'm gonna take a second and clean all this up and bring all my cookie sheets in and we'll be right back all right so I've got my cookie sheets already and my cookie scoop and this makes quite a bit of them Okay, so I'm just gonna put 12 on a cookie sheet. And they are cakey. So they're kinda, they're gonna poof. They're gonna poof. And when I load my cookie scoop, I kinda scrape it up the side of the bowl to get it nice and level. Then they're all even, cause you want both parts of the sandwich cookie to semi be the same size. All right, so I'm gonna keep filling my cookie sheets. I got both my ovens going today because we are gonna get these done. All right, so I've got all of my scooped dough onto cookie sheets. I am gonna load up both of my ovens and we're gonna cook them at 350 for 11 minutes.
You guys could smell these. It smells so delicious. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh, they're hot. All right, so we got our six pans out of the oven. I'm gonna take them off the cookie sheets and then we have to totally let them cool before we put the filling in. And this is why I use parchment all the time. It just makes my life so much faster and easier instead of scooping these off each one with the spatula. All right, so we'll be back in probably 20 minutes or so, and we'll, I'll show you how to make the frosting to fill, the, the, to fill them, and then we'll finish off these whoopie pies. Okay, so all of our whoopie pies have cooled. I've removed all of the cooling racks from underneath. So the next thing before we start our our frosting and the filling for these cookies. We're gonna flip them all over. And this is probably, honestly, one of the trickiest parts because they are cakey. Sometimes they like to stick to the parchment. So I just take a second and really gently pop them over because we're gonna put the filling on this. Yeah, you can see how much they stick by the cookie. So I would highly recommend using parchment on these. But you can see how cakey and moist, and if you could smell these chocolate cookies, you might, oh, it's so good. These really are worth, worth the time they take. And they freeze beautifully, so. I just left these over here, because they're not in my main area. I can fit more if I leave them. And then the uh, last dab of the batter will have that as a snack, because they don't match. So the original recipe for the filling used the egg whites when we separated the eggs. I've never liked that recipe, so I just kind of make my own buttercream. So I've got probably three quarters of a stick of softened butter and probably, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of shortening. So hang on to that. We're gonna measure out some powdered sugar. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go for four cups. because this is definitely not a recipe where you wanna run out of filling. All right, so then you put your softened butter and a little bit of shortening in. And we're gonna mix this up here quick. And this is the frosting I use for my cakes and any time. Okay, so you just kind of want to incorporate it till it's crumbly. Grab my salt. It really, really balances out the sugar. All right, give it some glugs of vanilla. Move this over here. Or however much you feel. And then we're gonna add some milk. And be careful because we want to keep this nice and thick. So add probably a couple tablespoons to start. I like to beat this really, really well. Make sure it's all really well mixed in. Wait, that is super thick. I'm getting a little workout here, so I'm gonna add a little more milk. trying to decide if I have enough. I never measure when I make frosting. Maybe I ought to, but I guess I never have. Okay. <laughs> 
All right, so I think that looks good. So I realize that not all of you at home might have piping bags and piping tips. So just use a gallon size Ziploc bag. And well, no. Go down. He smells the butter over there. I would use my bag holder, but I need it this way. I'm just going to pop it in this bag. And I would do the same thing with a piping bag. All right. Can you hand me the scissors there? All right, so get your air out. Go ahead and lock the lid. Thank you. And we're just gonna take the tip and cut off a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna do one row and I'll show you how to fill these. And you don't want it super thick, but it does go a lot faster if you do it that way. So start on the outside and just make I used to frost these all by hand until I realized that if I put all the frosting in a piping bag, it would save me so much time because I used to make dozens and dozens of these for even my clients. So this is the quick cheater method of getting stuff done and doing it efficiently. All right, if you've got a tiny bit of frosting left, feel free to go back and fill in anywhere you think you might want to. When you put the lids on these, whoops, um, they're going to squish out. Some people like more frosting. I like <laughs> the perfect ratio of frosting to cake. So I'm just going to get rid of this frosting because why not? I think that looks pretty darn good. So now that we've finished this, you can just throw this out. Super easy cleanup. Okay, so now that I've got them this way, you just put the lid on. Since you use the cookie scoop, they should all be very uniform shape and size, which is perfect. And what do we have? A couple dozen? These definitely get a glass of milk with them. Let's lid these. See that one? It could be used more. Let's look at that one. All right, so here is the finished whoopie pies. It looks like we get. Six, twelve, two, yeah, two and a half dozen. So good. If you love chocolate cake and frosting, this is the ultimate dessert. And this is why we say whoopee to these delicious pies. All right, so then now that you've painstakingly and lovingly, very lovingly, made these whoopie pies, I'm going to show you the best way to keep them fresh. So here's what I do. I just take a gallon sized Ziploc bag and my good old Costco stretch tight and I individually wrap them. And I will sit and do this to all of them because they stay fresh that way. And when we were harvesting, this is how we got them in our lunch. They were all just wrapped and uh, ready to eat. And then I just set them in the bag and you pop them in the freezer you can pull one out and um, let it thaw a little or not if you like frozen cake. And they stay in the freezer for, gosh, a good month. So know that all the work that you've done, you can keep fresh. So I'm just going to finish these up and I'll show you a finished bag here and then we'll, we can pop them in the freezer. Okay, so now that we've got, I think about nine fit in one gallon size Ziploc bag. Go ahead and write on the date on these. Whoops, these are chunkier than this. 
zip it shut. Then I just lay them in the freezer like this. And once these get um, frozen, you can just stack them on top and then you can pop them out and thaw them as you need them. They're delicious. They're great to serve to guests. They're great to pop in kids' lunches. And they're great to just have a stress relieve chocolatey, cakey snack. I hope you try these at home. They are a labor of love, but they, they are worth all the time that you spend on them to make them because they are so delicious. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and like this video and share it with a friend. I know these are pretty regional and a lot of people have never heard of them. So share the love. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Let's see, I'm gonna put this over here. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Can you see it in here? Where's my recipe? Whoopee! That's what we said when we eat them. They're so good. Holy cow, these are hot. We'll eat those. <laughs> We're eating all of these, but those are the snack. We're good. Let's clear this. I'm trying. Let's do our super shot. 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 Super shot.